Well, one of the things we have to do all the time in Python is to build data structures. We have to build lists, we have to build dictionaries, we take in data from external files. Um, and we can do those with loops, and we will see a little bit today in today's lecture about how to do that. But there is a better way, a shortcut way, called comprehensions, and that's what today's lecture is all about. So let's get started. Well, let's start working in the shell here today. So here I am in the Python interpretive shell. And let's imagine that I have a list of people here like this. Um, you might recognize who these people are. This is, this is in fact, yes, the Shakespeare family. Uh, and yes, his son's name was Hamnet. Well, let's imagine that what I would like to do is I would like to go through this list and I would like to concatenate onto each of those first names their last name, which was Shakespeare. And I'd like to build a new list of full names or maybe just uh, we'll call it a list of the family members, something like that. So what I'd like to do is I would like to start with an empty list like this. I'll make one called family. And now what I would like to do is I would like family to be each of those first names with Shakespeare concatenated onto the end. Well, here's one way I could do that. I could say for name in people, and then make sure we hit our tab. And I could append onto the list called family, and spell append, a particular value. Remember how the for loop works. It's going to take every element in people. It will copy each of those elements into a throwaway variable called name. It'll get overwritten four times. And I want to do what I want to do is I want to take that value in name. I want to add the last name Shakespeare, which I can't spell, onto that. Well, you'll notice I do have a little space here, right? <laughs> that little space is because I don't want the first name and the second name and the last name to uh, just be uh, completely right on top of each other. So I'm going to put a little space in there. And now if I want to look in family, I, 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 if I want to look in family, there you go. It wraps around a little bit, but you can see exactly what I got. So the trick here are two things. Number one is I have a list of people already, and I want to iterate that list with a for loop. And then somehow I want to build a new element based on the elements in the old list. And I'm doing that here in two steps. It needs a loop and I need an append. That's a really common occurrence in Python is building lists, building dictionaries, building sets, building all kinds of complex data structures. But we can always use a loop to do that, but Python has a really terrific way to do it called comprehensions. It's a bit of a shortcut, and you will see this all the time in Python, and it makes Python very, very concise and very, very expressive. And I love comprehensions. <laughs> you will too. This is what we just did. Uh, the variable names here are slightly different. I have a list of first names. I have an empty list to, uh, called full names. And you'll notice what I'm doing is I'm iterating that list called firsts, copying each into a bucket called first. That's a throwaway. And just appending it in exactly the way that we did before. So that's the old way, but let's look at now how we can do that with a comprehension. What we need to do is take pieces out of what we just did and put them into a more compact expression. So here, what I'll do is I'll create a new list called full names, and you'll see down here at the bottom, I've got my square brackets. Remember, memorize your brackets. If it's a square bracket, it's always a list, right? So I know that I'm building a list. It'll be indexed zero to whatever. Um, and so I need these several parts. The first part that I'm going to put in is that for loop, right? It copies every element in the list called firsts into a bucket called first. Again, just to repeat, just to repeat, there is no semantic relationship between those. And Python doesn't know that one of those is singular and one of those is plural. There's no relationship here that Python understands, right? But you'll notice what I do. I put that loop at the end of my comprehension. And the next thing I need is how to build each new element. Here, obviously, we're just using a really simple concatenation. And so I put that down at the front end of my comprehension. 
So if I run that, I'll just say full names equals, you know, first plus the last name Shakespeare for every element in the list called firsts. And if I just print that out, if I run it, read this as a little Python script, for example, and I run it on the command line, that's my output, just exactly like we saw. Well, let's do that same thing right back here in the terminal window. Uh, I'm just going to overwrite that little list called family, but we're going to do it this time as a comprehension. So my comprehension begins with square braces because I'm building a list. Inside those square braces, I need to have those two components. I need to have how to build it and I need the loop. So how I build it is name plus Shakespeare. And that's how I build it. That's that second part. That's the append. But now I need to put the loop in and that is for name in people. And there's my comprehension. And so if I look at family now, I spelled better, <laughs> uh, I get exactly the same solution, the same result. As you may have guessed, we can build dictionaries the same way. We'll build a few of these because I, I really want comprehensions to be pretty clear and straightforward. Uh, you'll just see them all the time. And once you get used to them, you'll use them all the time. And that's what's really crucial. Uh, here are some real world teams. These really exist. Uh, and let's imagine that what I would like to do is I'd like to build a data structure to keep track of how many wins these sports teams have over the course of their season. Now, a data structure that could hold that might be something like this. A dictionary makes a lot of sense here. Again, curly braces signify a dictionary. And the key that is to say the label on the filing cabinet drawer will be the name of the team. If I open the drawer and look inside to see what the value is, the value will be the number of wins they have over the course of their season. And obviously right now the seasons haven't started yet, so nobody has any wins yet. So the number of wins is all going to be zero for everybody. Can I build that data structure using a comprehension? Answer, yes, very easily. So Curly braces mean dictionary, right? It's again, again, have to memorize your braces and brackets. It's just, there's no way around this. And so I'm going to build a filing cabinet. That is to say a dictionary. I'll just call it wins. And I use the curly braces to signify that this thing will be a dictionary. Python knows what that is. I need to invent a loop. And right now I haven't done it any other way. So I'm just going to invent a little for loop here. Uh, I know that my list is called teams and I will copy each team into a throwaway bucket called name. And so uh, I'll just put my for loop in there. And then the next thing I need, remember for a dictionary is always a key value pair, key colon value. That's always how dictionaries get assigned. So in this case, I want the key to be whatever is in the bucket called name and the value that goes into that drawer is going to be zero. So I have key colon value and that key value pair that is inside that comprehension is the secret. So there are two ways that Python knows that this is a dictionary. Number one are the curly braces. Number two is that the key value pair with that colon always signifies the quote unquote label on the drawer and the contents of the drawer. And so that's what I'm going to build uh, is something that has, you know, Shelby Val Adams colon zero. It's going to build that data structure. Uh, we'll do that in just a minute. Um, I'm also going to do this one on the terminal window and I'm going to work through this one in a little bit of detail. So let's take those family names that we saw just a few minutes ago and let's build a dictionary out of it. And here's what I would like that data structure to be. I would like the key to be a person's initials. And when I open the quote unquote drawer and look inside for the value, I would like their name to be inside that drawer. This one is maybe a little bit trickier, but you can see what's going to happen. We're going to slice some strings. So I'm going to pull out letters out of their name and I will concatenate those letters and I will build a key out of those concatenated letters. And then I'll just put the whole name itself into the value of that drawer. 
Okay, let's build a dictionary. Um, here are my teams. Oh, I can't type teams. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and again, I'm going to create a little dictionary here with a comprehension. And so I'm going to start with my left hand curly brace. And the next thing I need is my key value pair. So I'm going to say that's going to be name and zero. That's my key value pair. And now I need to invent a loop. So I'm just going to say for name in teams. And there's my dictionary. Perfect. Uh, really easy to do, obviously very fast. Um, you just need those two components, always remember, right? You need that for loop that's in there, and you need some way to build those elements. Either copy those elements, build them, concatenate them here in a dictionary. It's a key value pair. That's all we really need. Let's do the one that's a little more complicated. Uh, here's my family unit, um, as we built it a little while ago. And remember, what I want to do uh, now is I want to build a dictionary where the keys are the initials and the values are these names themselves. So in order to get those initials, we need to do a little bit of slicing. So let's just do this. For name in family, print name zero. That's going to slice that string. It's going to tell me the first letter, the zeroth letter in every string. And so you'll see how we get W A H J. Now the last name is a little bit trickier to get at. And I know, I know they're all S, they all have the same one, but this is a good way for us to test to see whether we're getting if we get all S's out of here, uh, that's gonna be good for us. Now, one of the ways that I can find that, I'm just going to hit the up arrow, and I'm going to go through and do a little extra stuff here. One of the ways I can do that is I can find or I can ask Python to look in that bucket called name and find the location of a space in that string. That will give me the index of that location. And you'll see that in William Shakespeare, there's a space at index number seven and and Shakespeare there is a index uh, there's a space at index four remember we start counting at zero so index four is actually the fifth letter in that string so what I'm interested in now is the letter immediately after the space which is going to be wherever that space is plus one letter. So let me now slice that. So now what I'd like to do is I would like to find in name, I would like to find, I would like to slice out one letter, which is namely wherever that space is plus one. And I'm gonna put that in square brackets because now I'm slicing out of that string and you can see what I get they're all S's that's perfect so this is how I can find their last name so now what I'd like to do is I would like to create a dictionary with those initials and then the name in there so what I can say is let's see what did I use family <laughs> let's just call it initials <laughs> Remember, it's going to be a dictionary, so I'm going to use curly brackets. What is the key? Well, the key is the zeroth letter concatenated with, I can't type and think at the same time, <laughs> the letter that is immediately after the space. So that together is their first initial and the initial of their last name. That will be the key to my drawer. And following that, I'm just gonna put name back into the drawer. There we go. So I'm concatenating together the zeroth string, the zeroth element in that string, plus the element that is immediately or the letter that is immediately after the space and that becomes the key and then i'm going to put the name right into the drawer for name and family 
So let's go back to the slideshow and we'll just work our way through this. I'm going to do it twice. I want to do it the long way with a loop and then we'll arrive at this short way with a comprehension. All right. I'm going to do this a little bit of a longer way here and I'm going to um, do it as a loop so that we can kind of see um, what we were going through. If the logic of working on that terminal window made sense to you, great. This is just going to be a repeat, but I want to make sure <laughs> that everybody gets caught up. So I want to show some logic in case that was a little too fast or a little too condensed. Uh, let's just go through this a little bit more slowly. So here's some code. And I'll imagine that this is in a script. Uh, I could type this in the terminal window, but I would also uh, do this in my text editor as well. So here I'm going the long way. So I've got my list of first names up here. And then you'll see I'm building a list of first names using a comprehension to build a list. Then I'm setting up a blank or an empty dictionary called initials. And now I am going to create that dictionary with a loop. So I'm going to go through every uh, element in full names. I'm copying that into a temporary bucket called name. And then you'll see what I'm doing is I'm finding the space in that name. And remember that is an index that's going to be a number. And so I'm copying that number into a variable called space location. I could call it space index. That would make more sense if, if I took the time to rework this, I'd call it space index. <laughs> okay. And now what I'm doing is I'm building a key and I'm concatenating the zeroth letter of that name with the letter that occurs one after the location of the space. And then what I'm doing is I'm saying that in initials, whatever that key is, there's a new drawer and inside that drawer, I'm going to put the value name. So this is how I would build exactly this dictionary that you see down here at the bottom. And this is how I would do it if I was doing a loop without the comprehension itself. The comprehension is more concise. It's smaller, it's tinier, it's tidier than this. Now you'll notice that there's one thing that I'm doing here, only two things that we can't do in the comprehension, which is that I've created this temporary variable called space location. And in a comprehension, I don't have room to do that. So what I can do is I can just substitute out that definition of space location, which is I'm really just using the find method of every string to find the location of a space. And so here, if this was my program, I would comment out with a hashtag. I would comment out that line. And then in the next line, I would just use uh, the name dot find method as a way to do that, right? And I would put all of those two things together. And again, to build this as a comprehension, I start with those curly brackets on the outside and I take components from my code above. So the first thing that I'll need is that for loop. And if I needed to invent one, I would just would, right? So now uh, I wrote for name and full name. So I'm going to use that as the loop part of my comprehension. And then the key is this concatenation that we put together again, taking the zeroth letter of the name plus concatenate with the letter in the name immediately after the space character that becomes my key. And then obviously name itself becomes the value in that drawer. So I get to exactly the same place. If this helps you makes a little bit more sense because it's laying it out for you as a loop. That's great. Now, again, in the long run, if you want to do these with loops, you can, that's okay. If that logic makes sense to you, it's great. However, comprehensions are really, really nice because they're tiny, they're concise, they're incredibly powerful, and you will see them all the time. And hopefully you will start to use them all the time. I'd like to show you one more uh, for two reasons. Number one, because it leads beautifully into our next lecture on working with external data files, <laughs> but also because uh, it's, it's possible to use comprehensions as a way to filter data. We can put a conditional into our comprehension 
And that means that we can um, either keep or throw away values that we don't want or values that we do want to keep. So let's just imagine that I have a word list here um, in a giant uh, variable. I'm going to call it lexicon. Lexicon is just a word list. Uh, and I've got in my word list about 110,000 words. But what I would like is I want to see all of the adverbs that are in there. And a lot of adverbs, not all of them, but a lot of them end in L-Y in English. So I would like to filter my list and pull out all of the words that end with L-Y. So you can see a few here like awesomely and awfully and awkwardly, right? So can I do that with a comprehension? I absolutely can. <laughs> and here is the comprehension itself. And so we'll just talk our way through these parts. And um, um, I'll, work, I'll work with this in the, in the terminal here in just a second. But we will revisit this one in the next lecture because uh, I want to use a comprehension to load external data from a data file. All right, so just like we saw before, there is a loop inside this comprehension. So I'm going to iterate through the giant list called lexicon, and I am going to copy every value into a temporary throwaway variable called word. Now, interestingly, I would like to add this conditional. So if it is true that the word ends with the string ly, then I will process that word further. If that Boolean test is false, then my loop will ignore this word and just go on to the next one. So here's what I'm doing. I'm using a little bit of a chain here. So I'm taking that word and I am stripping off any white space. So if there's any white space at the beginning or white space at the end, I get rid of it. And a little hint. There will be, because when I bring in this data from an external data file, there's going to be a new line character at the end of every line, and I don't want that. I want to get rid of that. So what I do is I get rid of that new line character, and then I say, hey, take that thing that results. Does it end with ly? And if it's true, then what I do is I append that to my new list. And I don't really want that new line, that backslash n character, so I'm just going to get rid of that again. So here's how I can filter my entire list and work my way all of the way through there, right? Now, it's true if you think about it, am I stripping the word twice? Yeah, I am. Am I worried about it? No, <laughs> I'm not actually very worried about it. Uh, but this is how I can go through a giant list and I can just extract a subset or a smaller list of things that match some criteria. And again, uh, I'm just assuming here, we'll see this in a minute on the, on the terminal window, that uh, I assume that I already have a lexicon that contains all of those words. Uh, that's not something you want to sit around over your weekend typing. And so we're going to figure out how to load those from an external data file. But that'll be the next lecture. So let's just jump into the terminal window and let's just do this one really quickly. Here we are in the terminal window again. Uh, I have taken the liberty to load that external data file again. That's something we're going to talk about in the next lecture. So I'm not going to talk about that right now. <laughs> but uh, I have a whole huge lexicon here. And if I want to see how many words are in there, you can see there's 110,412 words in there. And if I want to look at a little bit of it, I can slice it. Remember, start, stop, step. So if I want to look at, oh, say, I don't know, the first 30 words or something like that, the first 29 words, you can see what we have here. Um, there's just a whole bunch of strings. And you'll notice those pesky backslash n characters that are on there. Those are all of those new lines. This is something that we always get when we bring data in from an external data file. But now what I would like to do is to use a comprehension to go through this giant list of 110,000 words and just pull out my adverbs. So this is exactly the same code we just saw a minute ago in the slideshow. Um, it's just the comprehension. And now we can see how many adverbs do I get. About 6,209 <laughs> of them, which is nice. So I can do the same thing. I can slice or maybe the first 30 of those adverbs. Uh, you can see uh, now we've cleaned them up. We've gotten rid of that pesky new line character. 
but in fact all of these do actually end in ly so i am pulling out um all of the ly adverbs uh, and i can do this really easily as a comprehension uh, so you can see between loading external data and comprehensions i can actually bring in tons and tons of data into my python file um, and work with it really easily and that is where we will go next thanks